Okay, so uh, let's look at some rooftops. So uh, we're gonna begin with supply. Uh, 2020, we brought in 5,300 units uh, in multifamily, single family uh, in the blue, multifamily in the red. That was the fifth highest number of units brought to the tax rolls in Washoe County uh, in history. Uh, we're now firmly in that pre-Great Recession mode of, of adding units uh, to Washoe County. Uh, the outlook uh, based on the permits is, uh, well, based on demand of the new single family product, we, we do uh, uh, expect that 2021 will bring about the same amount of 2,000 units in Washoe County uh, in 2021. However, uh, multifamily had really poor showing in uh, building permits in 2020. Uh, with only 10% of those permits. However, we are tracking um, multiple multifamily projects with over 5,000 units uh, under construction right now. So we do expect uh, uh, the permits to slightly drop off, allow that slackening to tighten up before they come with more permits. Uh, again, 5,000 units under construction. So we'll probably match these uh, 2020 numbers of adding to tax rolls. Uh, in the single family, the, the builders are still struggling with those, uh, the five L factors, labor, lending, lots, laws, lumber. Uh, you can add, you know, fire, flooding, litigation. And so that's what keeps the, that single family product down into that 2000 range and not up in that four or 5,000 we saw during the Great Recession. Uh, however, we have plenty of product, um, approved product in the single family um, across uh, the Reno Sparks market, you know, years of absorption. If you look at the numbers, uh, the most active area uh, in the light blue is uh, Spanish Springs as far as sales. They sell the most in Spanish Springs, and that's followed by North Valleys. Uh, three out of four of all new home sales are in these three markets, and uh, we do expect Double Diamonds approved units of 115. Currently, that should uh, uh, spike up a, a, a tad with the approval of the Daybreak products. That's about 3,500 to 4,000 units to come in. So plenty of years of absorptions of single family. Uh, let's look with the at how the uh, pandemic impacted the supply of single family product. Uh, April is when people uh, come out and post their for sale signs and and. Instead, with the pandemic, people crawled into their caves and they did not uh, sell homes. And so we lost about a thousand homes uh, of new inventory coming in for the existing product over the summer, which is our heyday. You know, that's when we, we uh, sell all our homes mostly. We did recover it, as you see in September, um, in that, uh, you know, bringing new listings. However, with that pickup of demand that started in April uh, with those homes not on the market, you see what the total of active listings in the red in 2020, what, what's happening in December now, only just a little over 200 homes, existing homes available in Washoe County uh, shows you that very low amount of supply. Uh, and and uh, not surprising, this really affects your days on market um, and where we're, this really just reflects again that superheated housing market that we have, uh, looking at those 30 days uh, from point of uh, listing to, to go on contract, uh, seeing what that does in our market. Uh, this is, you know, that this all this impact on that single family uh, market is really um, impacting the multifamily market. Also, we had a good two year stretch of increased vacancies, trying to get bump, finally bump over that 3% vacancy. We got super close in 2Q of 20, and then here comes a pandemic. And even in the face of the media reports of people, uh, you know, not wanting apartments uh, for whatever reason, our apartments then vacancies decreased. There was more demand put on them because you couldn't find a single family home in our area. And then that causes that upward uh, pressure on those rents. Uh, this is from the Johnson Perkins survey. There's really no surveys of, of multifamily out in the outlying markets, um, but a look at the Zillow uh, listings is uh, Carson. We found five multifamily units available, uh, two in Dayton and two in Fernley, just to kind of show the overall region, not very much to pick over. In the single family rental market, which is, you know, not really, uh, there's really no central database for, for, for home rentals uh, outside of Zillow. We just kind of look at Zillow. So uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, we found 108 homes in the Cross Reno Sparks market. Uh, there are only four in Carson City. There were zero in Dayton and one in Fernley. So again, the, the supply, uh, very, very, very little 
in across. We do uh, expect a new uh, apartment construction to, to kind of help with that supply, increasing that rate. However, that new single family, again, it's more of a measured pace. Um, again, so just, you know, continue 2000 in the Reno Sparks. Uh, let's look at the demand uh, across uh, the region. Always an interesting discussion because of conflicting data. Let's start with this uh, sources of new population, uh, which generally conflicts the uh, U.S. Census Bureau in red and state demographer in blue. Uh, 2019 is your most recent population numbers from both sources at the county level. Uh, you won't see the 2020 data come in until um, about a month or two still. And then census in 2020, they'll come in with two pop estimates. One will be the the 100% um, count decennial. And that's a, a, an April 1st date, April 1st, 2020. So that's kind of too uh, short of the what the pandemic impacts. Uh, but they'll have a, ju uh, a July 1 intercensal estimate that will also come out. Uh, to give us better uh, feel of that 2020. And then of course the state the mark will have his 2020 eventually. These are blue numbers start of 2020 or our state the mark for projections. The state, uh, the census does not project at the county level. And so this is kind of give us a feel. Um, Two percent is what state the mark for projecting 2020. I uh, do want to say that Fernley, you know, Lyon County led in growth rates and population pre-Great Recession. They're slowly catching up again. The Lyon County growth rate was 1.7 in 2019 and projected to be 1.9 in 2020. Uh, they have passed Carson City in their population, uh, whereas Carson City's growth rates are, are a 0 0.2 to a 0 0.4% in 2020. Uh, so Carson just does not grow that fast. There are 2020 population estimates at the state level, and that's in green. So that's Nevada's uh, growth rate through 2020, uh, which kind of brings us again, this conflicting demand uh, numbers. So we're seeing all this growth, uh, or we feel the growth and we see the construction, uh, but now the state or uh, the Census Bureau is showing uh, a big decrease in from 2% to 1.5% in our growth rate across Nevada. Of course, that's heavily driven by the South, Las Vegas. However, Vegas had a 1.9% growth rate in 2019 and a 2.6 growth rate in 2018. So that 1.5 is uh, is in the face of what we feel is a, a, a lot of growth coming to the state in our region. Uh, there's some more insight you can get out of this more current 2020 data that's coming out of the Census Bureau. Uh, 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 this is just some net domestic migration to show movement across regions in 2020. And as you look on the West Coast, uh, we're like the Midwest, Northeast, where we've lost uh, across a lot of categories to the South. The South is the winner of, of, of the growth uh, uh, from the pandemic. Uh, but the blue uh, cells you see are, are where we did gain in the West, uh, 45 to 64 year olds, uh, professional degrees and divorce people. Uh, let's look at uh, some of that 2020 data of, of around migrating around the West Coast, which is that last blue column on the right. Uh, the Washoe County, those who moved to Washoe County in 2019 is on the left by age. As you see, it's the millennials uh, that really, and this has been the ongoing for the last five years is that 20, 29 year olds come into Washoe County. As you see that movement 2020 around the West that the, it reflects the same age ranges. So nothing surprising there. Uh, however, when you look at the educational attainment of ages 25 and over, top is all Washoe County residents. Those who moved to Washoe County 2019 is in the middle. And then on the bottom is that, um, that mixing in the West uh, that came out 2020. And what you're seeing is that your bachelor degrees and graduate and professional degrees are leading this mobility uh, within this pandemic uh, movement. Let's look at the new single family sales demand. Uh, the number of sales, this is just Washoe County, number of sales in the blue bars. Um, this is pre-pandemic. Our first quarter was the uh, highest amount of sales since 2007, pre-pandemic. And then pandemic hits and it still uh, maintains the sales. And so uh, we sold throughout the year 2020, the most new single family since 2007. Uh, and you see those prices in the red fluctuate 
But if run it runs straight line, they're really kind of holding steady with that 475, 485, 495 uh, in in that range. On the other hand, single family, the existing single family start off with somewhat of a dud in 2020. Uh, we just heard today that uh, across the U.S., the most homes were sold in 2020 across the U.S. compared uh, since 2006. Uh, however, because of our low supplier, low inventory in our region, uh, we really just didn't come off very strong in the first quarter. However, here's this, uh, this pandemic push uh, starting in June that really um, shot up the number of sales. And with such low inventory at the same time, this puts that really upward pressures on the prices, which is not very good in our area. Let's look at the trends of those prices across um, 20, 30, uh, 20 years. Uh, so what this shows is the median value, value of just greater Reno Sparks in the red across those 20, uh, 18 years. And the blue line is a 4% is a annual appreciation rate that we measured between 1990 and 2001 in the Reno Sparks market. So we run that uh, forward. We actually started working on this graph in 2003 when we were seeing these 10, 20, 30% appreciation rates and so we started running this to show um, kind of the fluctuations of, of what this, of the, what the values are doing with, with some sort of normal appreciation. So you see the, the crisis, the collapse of housing. And then actually for uh, prior to the pandemic, we had some six good quarters of right in that four to 6% appreciation range. Uh, so we're starting to really normalize, which is really good, bring product in and then boom, pandemic hits, demands up. Uh, prices go up, and so we're in that in that danger zone again. Um, however, at the same time, where our incomes have been growing uh, at a very healthy rate, and this also um, helps us guide with you know what is our home appreciation, what should it be, is really what our wages and income grow, right? Be able to afford a house uh, for the locals. Uh, this shows the green as the median family income, um, eight percent growth between eighteen nineteen. That's a very high growth rate. Median household income growing at 14% clip. Uh, that's probably one of the highest in history for our region. Uh, over the last, between 2012 and, and 2019, we're at 5 to 6% average annual growth rate. Those are really good numbers for our area. If you look down below at the Carson City median household in the Lyon County household and the, car, and the median family, you see a much lesser rates. However, Lyon County is starting to feel that, that uh, uh, spillover from the Tri-Center out in Story County. is starting to see more you know, industry activity. In the last couple of years, really, is when we started seeing the Lyon County incomes really grow. If they look back two or three years, their growth rates would have been much higher. Uh, that's 2019. You know, this is from census data. It still doesn't show any sort of 2020 impacts. So let's look at uh, Department of Employment wage information, which is as current as two quarter, second quarter, 2020. So this does give us that good April, May, June into that heavy uh, impacts of the pandemic. And this compares with the second quarters of the previous years across the 10 years uh, for the four counties in our region. And you can see for uh, Washoe, Lyon and Carson, uh, those uh, big drop offs in employment, which is in the blue, um, all off the off cliffs, whereas you see the Story County, barely a blip. Uh, that really shows that pandemic-proof industry mix in that tri-center. Uh, the reds are your, are your wages, and you've crossed all uh, regions, 7 to 9% increase year over year in, in wages in 2Q, just second quarter versus second quarter 2019. And really what this is a result uh, is of those low-wage jobs uh, being taken off the map. And so you take those uh, low uh, leisure and hospitality wage jobs off. And of course, you're going to see uh, payroll uh, or, or uh, dollars per hour are going to be are going to spike. And so as you add these leisure and hospitality jobs back in 2021 across these four jurisdictions, we're actually going to see your uh, average incomes uh, decrease because if you add those jobs back. So those, uh, you know, the incre increases in income and that extremely low mortgage interest rates over those six quarters I was talking about really helped us uh, boost our affordability. This is our housing affordability index. 
Uh, so with those uh, drivers in place, we saw our, our index or affordability increasing until the pandemic, until that demand spike. No, and nobody came out and sold homes. Uh, and so income's growing, yes, uh, low interest rates, uh, but uh, we're seeing that, that price shock really hitting the affordability in the last couple quarters. Here's we are with actual, um, you know, your qualifying income for these various housing products at the prices in 3Q related to the red lines and the yellow print on the right to median family income and median household income, where they lie within this mix and this matrix. Uh, so really you need six figures now in, in Reno Sparks and even Carson City to afford a detached product purchase. Uh, and even for the rental um, detached and even attached market, uh, you really need a higher income, 75K or higher in, in your household. Uh, below the median household income, 71 or 72,000 in, in Washoe County, uh, you do have an existing uh, attached product to, to, for purchase or apartments uh, are still affordable in, in for that range. Um, affordability really is also uh, relevant to geography and amenities. So as you move east, um, you, you've in, into Fernley's, um, you have you can buy a brand new house for a uh, hundred thousand, a hundred thousand plus less than the Reno Sparks market and the Carson City market. And you can still get an existing home if you can find one for under three hundred k in Fernley. Um, as you see, Fernley uh, did pretty well in twenty twenty. They uh, will sell one hundred thirty five homes in Fernley um, again in two thousand fifteen. I think they sold five brand new homes, and so you do. You're you're seeing that uptick. It's not as strong as we felt, um, especially with this really strong demand on the Reno Sparks market, we're just not seeing it uh, spill over into these outlying markets yet. Uh, Dayton will sell about 100, and that's about, they're on track for the last five years of, at that pace, and Carson City, about 75. Uh, they all have plenty of uh, projects in the pipeline, active, under construction, approved, um, and so, uh, we do expect, you know, there was a, some good increases in the existing market and the prices all, are all up. And so uh, with, with this kind of data and the tea leaves, uh, we feel that's maybe the supply, that's a supply issue with that new, uh, bringing that new product to the market in these outlying markets. Um, however, looking ahead, you know, not just 2021, but in these further uh, 5, 10, 20 years is really what's going on in that I-80 uh, Highway 50 corridor with, uh, you know, with, with uh, the Tri-Center being built out and Tri-2 making a go in Southwest Fernley and the other uh, industrial logistic uh, issue or uh, purchases, Victory up north of Fernley and Nurgos Reno, that's that bl uh, yellow square and the uh, Western Nevada Rail Park were just purchased by heavy hitters. They're not flippers. Uh, they have a uh, very large projects across it, the U.S., the owners of these uh, new purchases, uh, and then the Hazen Park, and then if you even stretch into Fallon with the NAS, Fallon NAS expansion of the base. Uh, so this is uh, kind of the, you know, forward-looking next 10 years of what's going to happen with that, uh, the need for that infrastructure through the governor's office is really in the, uh, the north-south uh, electrical utility corridors and uh, rail is really going to be important to this growth out east. Uh, in, in the governor's uh, budget, he also talks about, uh, you know, blockchains in the Tri-Center, how they're going to build, uh, you know, a blockchain connected community. So this is really a big focus or bullseye, you know, looking 1020s out for our region and housing of rooftops is just going to have to catch up out there to supply that labor out there. Looking at just 2021 of uh, mobility activities now being driven by millennials, the baby boomers, cost of living and quality of life. Uh, we don't feel the pandemic was the cause, but it was just a, a reality check brought by maybe thoughts of mortality of really where do we really want to uh, uh, put our stakes in, in, in operate. You know, and that helps is being helped with technology, of course, to be able to work from anywhere for those selected skills and industries, of course. Uh, with the low inventory of single family homes combined with increasing demand, we'll continue to push up those existing home prices. Unfortunately, that's a major issue until we get this inventory, uh, more inventory in place. Um, and as we, these existing home prices reach parity with the new product, 
this is going to provide even more incentives for builders uh, to keep building and build a, a more product than they have in the last five years, which is what we need. Um, and then the lack of the inventory and the high prices in the cross all single family is really going to keep a down pressure. It's going to keep people in, in multifamily vacancy and, and that upper pressure on rents. And we really don't see an end to this kind of this madness, this really hot and heated market until we balance with California, which is a lot of our, uh, our, our purchases are coming, our growth, our demand. Uh, until that backfilling of those homes for sale in California cease and those prices are, are become moderated with our prices, we just don't see the end to this, to this uh, the spike in demand until uh, we, we moderate with California. That ends uh, my presentation. And uh, yes, uh, please uh, contact me or Fred through the uh, chain of the command. And if you have any questions or uh, need to get more in depth with what we discussed. Thank you so much.